when I bought Carl in 2013, his batteries were pretty much dead because he had been sitting for five years and they hadn't been used. So I invested into two brand new AGM batteries, each 150 amp hours, and it cost me about a thousand bucks back then in Panama. Since then I've had the batteries on board for about seven years now. And when I came back to Carl in January, I noticed that they're not doing so well anymore. And in the end, I was actually living with Lucy lights and flashlights in here because even just putting on the light at night, like the LED lights, it would be like flickering. So they were pretty much dead. We're down here in the Las Perlas Islands in Panama, on the Pacific side of Panama. And we're about 40 nautical miles away from Panama City, but on the mainland the virus is still raging quite a bit. There had been a thousand new cases just uh, months ago, and now they're down to between 500 and 800 new cases. But that's still quite a bit for a country with like 4 million inhabitants only. So I didn't really feel like going into the city and buy some new batteries. So one day I was uh, scanning through the Panama Cruises Facebook page and it came up that somebody was selling 350 amp hour AGM batteries that were three years old and he wanted 350 bucks for it. And on top of that, he was actually headed for the Las Perlas Islands. So I thought this might be my chance and I bought them and now they're here on call. Guess it's time to take out those old batteries and throw the, well, new to me ones in and hopefully everything will go well. Let's see. Just because I know how great I am for getting things as soon as I took them apart, how they went together, I'm going to label all of the cables. So I have to cut out the wood here on the side so the batteries actually fit in um, on this side. Well I decided to go old school with the chisel and <laughs> now I definitely have enough room for the batteries. <laughs> well, well, well. Took out a bit more than I wanted but... Alrighty I covered the solar panels. I got the terminals from Paul. Now I'm going to take off the fuses between the solar panels and the batteries just in case and disconnect the batteries from the house net. I always forget which one it is that you have to disconnect first but I think it's the negative. What do you say? Negative, positive, it's 50-50 right? Might just give it a quick Google. The great thing nowadays with the internet, everybody can do everything because everything is on Google. So, yeah, it's the negative that goes first. Take necessary precautions before you try to disconnect your batteries. I think we did that, right? Yeah, sounds good. I think we're safe. Well, let's give that a thorough clean before we put the new ones in. Cleaning is finished and wood can go back in. Okay, now when you connect the batteries back together, then 
you do the positive first and the negative second. Now, I have my batter batteries connected parallel, so they're both each 12 volts, so if you connect them in parallel, that means the voltage stays the same, but the capacity of the batteries doubles. So I have 150 amp hours on each battery, so if I put them in battery, then... <laughs> if I put them in battery... If I put them in parallel, then that makes 300. Okay, everything looks kind of okay. So I'm throwing the engine on now, or it's already running as you can hear. Now I'm measuring 13.55. I'm gonna charge now for an hour or two and just then see if the charge is actually holding. And then see how they do tomorrow with the solar. So I'm gonna have a beer. And then I'm gonna go clean up the mess. Last time when I took up my anchor, my windlass stopped working and I had already noticed the last couple of times that the windlass was starting to get a little icky. Um, it would turn at times but not pull the chain up, so last time it completely stopped working. I'm gonna take a look at it today, see if I can figure out what's wrong. So my model is a uh, Low Friends Tigris, 1,200 watts windless. When I noticed that there was something wrong with it, I went up here last time and I opened up this cover to get to the motor to make sure that there wasn't a power issue. Usually the windlass is connected to the starter battery with a control box that can control whether you want to take the anchor up or down. In my case, this control box had uh, burnt down years ago, so what I did, because it's not necessarily necessary to have it, I just hardwired the positive to the windlass motor, so that means whenever I turn on the main switch, the windlass will automatically start picking up the chain. So when I noticed that it wasn't running anymore, the first thing that I checked was I checked if I had any uh, voltage here and then I switched on the switch and I went up to the motor and I measured up here at the motor and I had 13.4 volts. So I thought, okay, there is voltage. So I assumed maybe there's something wrong with the motor. So let's take it apart. Well, I never cleaned a commutator before, but I did some Google research and it says to clean first with a toothbrush and some contact cleaner and then use 600 grit sandpaper, making sure you sand evenly so there's no difference in height or anything um, on this part and this part. So I'm just going to Google a little bit more to see if there's other recommendations. Otherwise, that's what I'm going to go for. 
and then also clean these guys. Unfortunately, whenever you look up any troubleshooting, the manuals or the troubleshooting stops exactly where it becomes interesting. As soon as it comes to, oh, then it's going to be your electrical motor, hand it in to a mechanic or replace the motor and you're like, well, but that's exactly the part that I want to know about. So I couldn't find an explosion drawing, so I'm not really sure how this guy comes off. Maybe if you take this guy off and then maybe you can... I don't know. But anyways, it's actually pretty good because when you clean the commutator, I guess it's called, you want to make sure you clean it evenly and you want to always sand in the same direction and you want to sand like all the way around with the same pressure. So actually having it still mounted like that, I can like turn it around like this and make sure that it always goes the same direction. You don't want to go forth and back, always the same way. And I'm using 600 grit. Well, definitely a little cleaner than before. Since I have everything apart and I just want to make sure there's nothing else wrong, I'm doing some other little tests that you can do on the armature. Um, you can test the commutator. I think those are the right words, but this guy here back down there, I think it's a commutator. So there's a test you can do to make sure that there's no... Um, shortage, shortages between the wires or burnt through wires. So you put your multimeter on the lowest uh, resistance uh, section and then you point one end here and then the other end, well, let's put it here, at uh, 180 degrees on the other side and then you basically spin the whole thing around testing 360 degrees like looking at each one of the resistances so it doesn't matter so much how high they are but what matters is see this is um 0.6 now the next one is 0.6 as well so it's important that they're all kind of like in the same range so if the resistance goes up then there could be a burnt through wire or if the resistance goes down then there could be a shortage and then another test you can do is to make sure there is actually no continuity between the armature stack and the commutator down. So these guys down here all have con should all have continuity, so I don't have to swap it around. I can always use the same guy and then I can go along all of these to make sure. And in this case, you actually want to have the one showing meaning there is no continuity so no contact between both of them so let's test that too awesome so i think this buddy is good hopefully let's put everything back together So here's a little summary of the things that I tested on my windless motor. First of all, I checked the carbon brushes to make sure that they're still long enough. And I also cleaned them and made sure that they're not sitting too snug in their housing. And some of them were pretty stuck, so I did sand off a tiny little bit on the sides until they're going in and out of their little houses easily. Then I cleaned the magnets inside the housing. I cleaned the commutator. I tested the commutator for continuity and I cleaned the armature stack and I tested the stack teeth for no continuity to the commutator. All of these tests resulted positive so I don't think there's anything wrong with this motor so let's bring it back up forward and see if it's actually running. Okay, so I connected the cables to the windless motor again, but there's still no reaction. So I'm gonna go back down into my cabin 
where actually my troubleshooting for this problem had originally begun. Okay, in the end, <laughs> it was what I had expected first, but didn't inspect thoroughly enough. This is usually where the little solenoid box of the windlass sits, but it burnt through years ago. So what I did is that I just hardwired the positive of the up here. And I had checked to make sure that this connection here was still solid. What I had not checked is whether the cable was still solid in the, in the crimping. So it's not, it's really loose. So now when I just pushed it in a little bit, then the windlass ran again. So I guess I learned, follow your guts. It's good to follow your instincts. This was my first idea because when Maria came over to sail with me, I'd stuffed a lot of shit in here. And um, after that, the windlass stopped working. I was like, ah, oh, maybe it's in here. So I came here to check the connection, but I didn't wiggle around on the, you know, where the cable sits in the, in that connector. You know, like here. So it seems that that is loose. I'm just going to take it apart now. But when I did wiggle on it and then I put the windlass back on it, started running. So let's fix that. Shouldn't take long. <laughs> and hopefully that was really what it was. Seem to have done the trick. And the foreman, Mr. Boobs, is also content, it seems. But more about that soon.